Ho ho boardies from Sportline Games, I'm Gareth and today we're playing uh, Raging Loop and this is uh, episode 11 I think, 11? Episode 11. Um, uh, another night has passed, we've had two more deaths, we've had uh, the old man who cries wolf, he's just died, and uh, we've also had Moki, uh, young Moki's died as well which is very sad. Um, and the thing about those two deaths is that they looked a bit suspicious because I think at least the old man looked like he was killed by a blade. Uh, which is interesting um and then we went to sleep and then around seven o'clock in the morning is that what we're saying or seven yeah it must be in the morning right uh shiemi has suddenly appeared at kawaraki's door and what's with that let's find out what's going on with that uh okay so let's go what's wrong with you only gonna get punished if you don't sleep i think another hour is fine i was awake until late yesterday and nothing happened Maybe it is seven at night. I don't know. Oh no, hang on. It's in, it is in the morning because otherwise she'd sleep until late. I've been sleeping too much, honestly. I'm not tired, but I'm really, really hungry. Don't you have your food stocks? Uh, with the uh, Kyori being uh, well, you know. I said I decided not to touch it. Might share it with the others. We're all hungry today, so I'll just tough it out. How upstanding. You should eat, though. What, the stuff from before? Now I'll pass. Why are you here, anyway? Can't sleep. Is that really it? haraki san Do you suspect me? No. Why? Because you told them about the monkeys. Knowing full well what it meant. Hmm. The Feast of the Yomi Purge is a well-constructed communication game. Well-constructed? I mean that there's no way to win this game beyond communication. Uh, Shikamaki-kun thought the same thing. To win, both the humans and wolves need to have some tricks and individual strategies. Consider the monkeys. They seem useless at first, but you can use them to easily eliminate two suspects. And this is possible from day one. So they can become reliable leaders. Though that'd be hard for Maki and Mako. Yeah, he was a free spirit and she's a child. The wolves, on the other hand, have to go on the defense. In a situation when being suspicious is enough to get yourself hanged, it's important not to draw attention to yourself. That's easier said than done, though. Yeah, keeping your silence can be just as suspicious as keeping uh, being a blabbermouth. Exactly. But there are two factors that make it easy to gauge trustworthiness right from the very start. Do they have something to do with monkeys? Yeah, you have to watch uh, out for those who give bad advice or don't provide uh, useful suggestions. A good example of the former is uh, Kiyonosuke-san. Uh, His poor planning threw everything into disarray, and that makes him really suspicious. Well, he's confirmed to be human. Right. Well, that's assuming Takumi-san wasn't lying about being the snake. Huh. You're saying he could be lying? It's not impossible. After all, anyone can say that they have a guardian. Honestly, if I were a wolf, I'd lay uh, low until I killed a few and then claim to have a guardian to ensure my safety. I see, but Takumi Nichan came out on the first day. Yeah, that was uh, basically suicidal. But since that allows the spider to protect him, it's uh, like a telling blow that hurt the attacker, I think. Anyway, all things considered, I'd say he's it's safe to trust ta uh, Takumi-san and uh, Kiyonosuke-shi. Personally, I think you're trustworthy too, since you spoke up about the monkeys. What if I only did it because I saw your game? Oh, that'd be bad. Wait, hold on. Aren't you basically saying you suspected me until I spoke up about the monkeys? Oh, you noticed. This goddamn guy. What the hell, man? I did it because I wanted to believe you. Alright. I forgive you then. Woohoo! <laughs> 
So who's the most suspicious one? Harrogen. Thought so. She's not making much sense lately. And you can explain her shift in personality by assuming it's because uh, she killed her granddad. Or maybe she couldn't agree with the other wolf on their decision to kill uh, Kanzoshi and stopped th uh, trusting anyone. Oh, that makes sense. You could make up a thousand reasons like this, though. You couldn't go by just that. They'd said Haru hadn't gathered many votes, but they treated her like some kind of pariah, making it clear that everyone suspected her. It was only natural to use the snake to check on her. Though she didn't seem uh, all that good at games and stuff, it probably wasn't fair to judge her purely on not making any useful uh, contribu uh, contributions. In that regard, Yasukun is way more suspicious. Huh. But he did say a lot, like pointing out my math was incorrect. And he did say something like what you just said, not doing anything indirectly helps with the wolves or something like that. Not to mention that on the first day he suggested that the spider should hide. That's true. Though most of those things were minor, he was definitely contributing to the game. The first day was especially important. For the wolves, it was best to create a flow where they could just stay quiet and wait for those with guardians to, uh, to out themselves. What bothered me was the fact that uh, he wasn't the one who brought up uh, leader selection and the monkey thing. He was shady because he hadn't made those useful propositions. I thought he'd figure those things out a while ago, but, uh, or maybe I, as an outsider, uh, just had a better grasp of the situation. I guess he's innocent then. I don't know about the rest, though. I can't even imagine what Rikako, Uematsu-san, and Taimu-san are thinking. I know what you mean. But if you looked at the circumstances outside the feast, Rikako, uh, Uematsu, was pretty shady. It always felt like she was hinting at something. It wouldn't have surprised me if she knew more uh, than she let on. If she was a village head, she could know things only those from uh, Kamafuji Yoshi knew. There were more than enough reasons to suspect her. If only we could follow the lead uh, and solve this whole thing. Uh, it'd make things way easier. araki son, Are you enjoying this? Oh, are you enjoying this? No. But you look like the type of person who likes mystery stories. I won't deny that, but I uh, can't really enjoy myself when people I care about are in, uh, and I are in danger. If I did act like some master detective, I'd really just be some useless amateur. It wouldn't accomplish anything. I'm not sure I buy that. What do you mean? Everyone else is a mess. I think most people, uh, normal people, would lose it in this kind of situation. I could say the same about you. I'm not exactly normal either. Oh yeah. I heard that you almost killed someone. Who told you that? That's a secret. Though it didn't sound intentional. <sighs> well, how do I say it? I repeatedly stabbed him in the back. I think it happened in middle school. I grabbed a bat and beat, so, uh, beat up some students who were bullying Yasumi, uh, Yasumisu kids. Whoa. Some of them were connected to the head families, so it became a big deal, and that's basically why the adults here are so harsh on me. I see. So you fight out of a sense of justice? So she was sent to Yasumisu for making enemies out of the village heads. I wouldn't say that. It's more like I just have a short temper and wanted to make a scene. Rebellious phase. More or less. Same as Haruchan and Yoshikun. In a place as rural as this, it's rare for children uh, to grow up as level-headed as Yasukun, don't you think? Really? I think they'd be healthier and nicer than the edgy brats from the city. Let me rephrase that. In a place as poor as this. Well, there was no doubt that Yasumisu was uh, destitute. There were no cars, no cell phones, and it didn't even feel like it had an economy. They probably lived uh, mostly off the land, making money from whatever they could spare from their farms and hunts. Since they had no decent way to sell stuff to anyone outside, most of their business had to be done through uh, Kamafujiyoshi. 
it was entirely likely that they were ripping them off. No way this place could be wealthy in these circumstances. Circumstances. I didn't believe that money could buy everything, but poverty took its toll on the people suffering it. Some could live in poverty while retaining the purity, but that was borderline saintly. It was a lifestyle too difficult for the common masses. Also, since the people of Yasumisu were out, uh, ostracized from Kamafujiyoshi, they were targets of unjust pressure from day one. I could understand why the children here strayed from that path. Though when you're looking at it like that, the way they strayed was so mild it was almost cute. Are you disturbed now? Not really. You're lying. You now think I'm so blunt I'd whip uh, out a blunt object to beat you up. I'm just going to ignore that poor attempt at a pun. Sorry. My ex wasn't any different. Oh? Um, oh, I see. You seem confused and I've no idea why. You weren't lying when you said you broke up with your girlfriend. You thought I was? I thought it was just some kind of pickup line. That's just mean. Our breakup was uh, insane. I actually felt like my life was in danger. Whoa, sorry to hear that. What about you? Huh? Your history with guys. I shared mine, so hearing yours is only fair, right? Uh, yeah, well... How many did you go out with? Two. I guess. What happened to you being a hyper slut who's done it with 53 guys? I never said that. I did exaggerate a bit, but I get tons of invitations. And yet you only went out with two. Hmm. Well, I didn't find many guys I got along with. What about me? <laughs> Let's not go any further. If I let myself get too attached... I'd be too scared of dying. Being afraid of death is normal though, isn't it? Not really. Why? God is way scarier than death. Oh yeah? I feel like, uh, I feel like you have a very unusual image of God. Really? You think of it as something frightening that you might actually meet, right? Everyone has met God. Maybe they just can't see it. And God really is scary. It's just that no one knows how. Myself included. You're the only one I don't understand. That's probably why... I'm afraid of losing you. That's something you say to those you promise your eternal love to. Are you mad? A bit. I see. We've gotten this far and you're still being cagey regarding your own background. You can only take uh, playing hard to get so far until it gets annoying. I'm just not sure what to do. This isn't easy for me either. Just tell me everything. I'm going back. GME. Good night. What the hell? Why didn't she talk? Did she still not trust me? Was she messing with me? Was she just, uh, kind of crazy? Or was it something else? Crap. I wanted to chase her down and get a real answer out of her, but I was locked in. This was so frustrating. Though, this wasn't the time to worry about that. Who would the wolves go for tonight? The wolf guy was dead, meaning there was one less person who'd vote Shiemi out tomorrow. It wasn't likely she'd get top vote. It was best to think that the wolves would go for someone who was useful to the humans and couldn't be killed with the votes. That meant that she and uh, Yasunuga-kun were the ones at the highest risk. Uh, on the other hand, the survival would make things difficult in, uh, in other ways. I'd probably be forced to consider the possibility that they themselves were wolves. 
Did I really trust Yemi? I felt I could, but not completely. Whatever the case, the situation with the more talkative ones was seen as suspicious would make it harder for her to survive. Should I have talked to her about running away? No, that was probably pointless. I didn't know much about her whole god thing, but it was clear that escape wasn't even an option for her. Something scary that everyone had met, yet not fully perceivable. Was she speaking figuratively, or could she literally see something? Shit, I don't care. I became irritated. My hunger was starting to get to me. Figuring it, uh, figuring it was better than just wasting my mental energy, I focused on taking a bath and going to bed. I had no idea just how naive my predictions would prove to be. Oh, next day. I woke up at 5 in the morning. The window was still boarded up so I couldn't see anything outside. All I could do was sit around and wait. Eventually I could hear the objects keeping uh, me in get removed and I was greeted by Yasunaga Aribe and uh, Shiemi Sarazawa. Those two actually survived. I met up with uh, Haru Makishima too. Her face was pale and she had bags under her eyes. No one here looked healthy anymore, but she was beyond even that point. Maybe she is the wolf? She'd gone completely meek too. The defiance from yesterday was gone, and she was just letting yasunaga -kun guide her. She'd lost another friend after all. We arrived at the dining hall but found no one there. The door was unlocked. It was a bad sign. It was Kanzo Mikishima's place all over again. Mum should be sleeping upstairs. With that knowledge, I opened the door. What if she was attacked? Even if she wasn't, considering her state yesterday, it wasn't uh, unlikely she was, uh, did something unthinkable such as suicide. However, I soon found out my worries uh, were for nothing. Rory san was standing all alone in the dark, in the dark dining hall, wearing an apron. The fact that she wasn't doing anything but standing was just eerie. Oh, my. Good morning. She turned around and greeted us. Her voice was the only thing calm about her. Her eyes were bloodshot and signs of malnourishment were all across her face. Her faint, forced smile made her seem on the verge of collapse. Oh, my God. She completely failed at acting normal. Her heart was uh, probably swirling around with uh, panic and sorrow as great as yesterday. Everyone here could see it. Mum, everyone's hungry. I'll make food so you just rest. Huh? But I can do it myself. Oh, I'll help. I'll actually cook for myself so I know what to do. After they volunteered to support Karu-san, Karuri-san, uh, I thought about what purpose I could serve here. Let's go, LFG gamers. And uh, call to Harachan before going outside. Are you the wolf? She came with me but wasn't saying a word. During yesterday's feast, feast, she'd had a flight uh, she'd had a fight with Karu-san. The woman had voted for Haruchan due to the change in her attitude and failed escape attempt, and I couldn't blame her for that. Considering her personality, I imagined that the exchange had been extremely intense. That was why getting her out of the dining hall was a good move. Problem was, we didn't really have anything to talk about. This was made worse by the hostility she'd shown me until just recently. According to Maki, that was a product of her affection towards uh, Yasunaga-kun, and all the drama surrounding him. Normally, I'd playfully uh, give her a hard time about that kind of thing, but it seemed in poor taste considering the situation. She was staring daggers at me. Maybe I just had to ask her. Haru makishima san What? I'll be frank. Are you a wolf? No! 
She didn't hesitate at all. Not like that meant anything. If you don't believe me, then Takumi will check. That'll show you. Are you saying that despite knowing? Huh? Knowing what? If he were alive, he'd be the one looking after Kaoru-san in the dining hall. He's, he's, he's dead. Yesterday, he went there first thing in the morning. With Kaoru-san in her current state, that was all the more reason for him to be there, but now he's missing. No way, that's just... We'll go check to be sure. Lead the way. Okay. Oh my god. Taiba, are you awake? Haru knocked on the door and tried to open it, but it was locked, meaning it wasn't touched. Kai-san came out. Sooner than later, she looked pretty displeased to begin with, but upon seeing me, she displayed outright disgust. What are you doing here? Sorry. Rory-san isn't well, and we needed more people. Where's Takumi? We're going to go check on him. I see. Her gloomy expression told me she'd realised what might have happened. She said that she uh, she had to prepare, so we excused ourselves. Please, ask if you need anything. Oh yes, of course. She shut the door on us. You're nice to all women, aren't you? What the hell was she saying? Being considerate of elders and women is the, gen uh, the gentlemanly uh, thing to do. Is that how you feel about Shani? I like her quite a lot. Please, don't. I feel so bad for Ni uh, Nichan. Nichan, Nichan. Nichan. Yasunuga Kang, surely. What do you mean by that? Yoshikun and Maki are gone. Karori san and Shini are all he has left. Also, she's the strongest among us. And she's always protected us from the people of Kamifujiyoshi and adults. Don't take her away from us. So that's how it was. I wasn't sure how she actually felt about Shimi, but there was definitely more trust and reliance than I'd expected. Yasunuga kun uh, spoke uh, like he'd given up on Shimi, but deep down, he was actually glad she'd returned. Harichan was aware of that. And she actually liked Shiemi. That was why she uh, concluded that uh, they should be together. However, it was clear they didn't feel like giving them her blessing. I understand how you feel. The end result depended on Shiemi. And since she hated Yasumisu, I felt like it sh uh, wouldn't be something Haruchan wanted. Then again, I really didn't know what was going on in uh, Shiemi's head either. And I had no idea who'd survived, so making predictions was a waste of time. For now, everyone should focus on ending the feast. I don't think I can do much. But if there's something you don't want uh, to tell your own, I'm willing to listen. Huh. What do you mean? Nothing much. It just feels like you have to, a lot to worry about. And personally, I still think that escaping outside is a good idea. That's not possible. Hmm. Can you try it yourself? But I failed, didn't I? That made me realise we can't escape. Isn't that just because you just happened to hurt your foot? It didn't just happen. Do you believe in God too? What did you just say? God doesn't exist. If I doubted that, I just couldn't cope with anything. No. There was a weird aura around her for a second. For a sec. Just for a little sec. Uh, but then she walked away, leaving me no choice but to follow her. Ah! Ah! We arrived at the houses. The mysterious girl was on the verge of crying. Good morning. What's wrong? Speak normally. You know how to, right? Ugh. 
Come on, be more mature. Repeat after me. Good morning. Papa. This was hopeless. Harachan glared at her while I stayed patient. Where's Rikaka, son? Honei-chan. Yes? Where is she? She hasn't come out. Her house is right here. It really was. I've been here yesterday. I knocked and called out to her. There was no response. Harichan and I looked at each other. And I tried opening the door. Well, if she's the spider, then she has to be dead for uh, Takumi to be dead, right? Huh. It was locked. Rikaku-san. Still no response. I, hesit I hesitantly put my ear t against the door. I heard some sort of rustling sound. She's probably getting dressed. Then... He really did. We don't know for sure. It could still be, uh... He and Osuke, she. What about me? Well, I did expect him to live. Is Rikaku sound well? She's all you care about, isn't she? And yes, yeah, she does seem alright. She's not out yet, though. I wonder what's up. I had a bad feeling about something. Good to see it was nothing. Does this mean that the one uh, to die was Lady Yamawaki? Taiba was alive. What? Why was he so positive? Arochan, take Miko to the dining hall. Kiyonosuke, uh, san, help me out. He tried to say something but decided against it. He must have realized what had happened to the one who'd usually be given these amazing jobs. Annoying jobs. Why did I say amazing? That's so funny. These annoying jobs. That were so amazing. As expected, the door to his house was unlocked. And the reek of uh, fresh blood was so strong he could smell it outside. I thought that was enough to help me prepare. But once I saw the source, I couldn't keep down what, I f what few contents my stomach had left. The two from the first day, Kanzo Mikishima and Yoshisugi Arobe, they'd lost all semblance of form to the point their corpses felt unrealistic. On the other hand, Chikomaki uh, Kamashida and the old guy's corpses were far too clean. Their faces were still intact after all. However, Takumi Moro-san's corpse was an, even un uh, was an even balance between ruined and intact. It was spread out on the floor surrounded by splashes and splotches of blood, as well as some bloody footprints. Scattered brain, grey matter, bone fragments, eyes. About 60% of his face was gone. This time the method was clear. There was a rifle lying next to his corpse. The weapon was actually on the scene for once, and it was a gun. What did it mean? I wanted to think about that, but I was too shaken by the clear agony uh, Takumi-san's death had brought him. You could see his suffering on the still-present half of his face. His hands were on his head, too, as if to cover his face or reach for the clearly fatal wound. He died while holding on to his shattered brain. Though fatal, the first attack hadn't killed him instantly. He could still move after it, which was a, a testament to his strength and willpower. His life had ended as he suffered overwhelming despair. It was written all too clearly on his uh, on his death visage. Visage? Uh, my emotions bubbled and overwhelmed my thoughts, and I vomited once again. Oh no. Uh, are you okay? Kiyonosuke, she asked, clearly avoiding looking at, him, uh, looking at it himself. Bring, bring me someone who can use guns, please. I never expected to, uh, you to come along. Oh, I see. Her expression was too stern and serious for me to even say that. Takumi Nichan. Shit. She cursed and looked at the gun. This is Kanzo Jishan's rifle. Uh, rifle. This is Kanzo Jishan's rifle. She grasped its long body and picked it up. All the five bullets were fired. See any empty cartridges? I'll look around. I found them real quick. 
They were covered in blood and flesh, but yeah, I found the metallic cylinders. Five of them. They were two meters away from the corpse, very close to one another. Either the culprit fired from there or gathered them afterwards. Look at the handle. Jimmy extended the rifle to me. I did as uh, I did as told. Compared to the rest of the gun, which had blood on every part, the handle was clean, like it had been wiped. They removed the fingerprints. Probably. Jimmy then held it, like she was about to shoot, and aimed at Takamisu's, uh, Takamisan's body. It was fired from here. How can you tell? The way the blood scattered. See how it's concentrated around there. It's proof the culprit fired from a low angle. Also, normal rifles can't make such a huge mess unless they're fired from really close. I'll make it point blank, and the stuff would get on and around the muzzle. And that was why it was natural to think it had been fired from where she was standing, near the cartridges. Can you actually aim and hit something with this? As long as you know how to aim and the target isn't moving, that's all you need. So this was done by someone who knows how to use guns. By the way, it's just a matter of looking at the bead through the sight. Guns are useful uh, little toys that make murder so easy anyone can do it. What about loading? That doesn't seem like something a layman can do, is it? Good point, but even Tai Barcham uh, has experience firing a gun. Finding the culprit in uh, Yasumisu won't be easy. This was a settlement where the people went hunting. Basically everyone here must have touched rifles before. All we could really assume was that Meiko-chan couldn't have done this. It's not like every bullet hit the head. Oh, it's not like every bullet hit the head. One grazed the ear, one hit the chest, one hit the shoulder. Oh, and look here, a bullet hole. She pointed at a small part of the floor that was ruined. So only one hit the head. Yeah. I think that one wasn't fatal, though. It was probably the one in the chest that ended it. She looked at the body's pose and made the same conclusion as me. Why do you know so much about gun, any guns, anyway? I have a hunting license. I know how to use guns, traps, and nets. I used to do lots of skeet. <laughs> Hang on. I used to do lots of skeet shooting outside of Yasumisu. What the hell is skeet shooting? I'm pretty good with a gun. Oh, damn. Didn't expect that. I can understand why. Did you plan to return here and become a hunter? I just wanted to have a gun. That's it. She said that as if it was no big deal. Her tone seemed kind of dangerous. Yes. So much so that she almost killed someone. I think it happened in middle school. I grabbed a bat and beat up some students who were bullying the Yasumisa kids. It was the impression you'd get from a girl capable of random acts of violence. I was probably jumping to conclusions. So, can we clean it up? Clean it up now. Uh, if you're fine with it. Let's do it then. Did you find out anything? I'm now 100% certain that these murders were committed by people. The culprit used a gun and wiped off the fingerprints. Acts that demonstrated a very human level of cunning. If we were up against something supernatural, they just use their mysterious powers instead. If someone mysterious be, uh, can be explained using murder... Uh, hang on, let's start that again. If some uh, something mysterious can be explained using mundane means, uh, then it was caused by mundane means. That was the general rule I lived by. Proven both uh, through knowledge and first-hand experience. Supernatural powers that required carrying out occult rituals were prime examples of things it applied to. The more detailed the preparation required, the more opportunities to notice something amiss. If the trick relied on uh, concealing the method, it was safe to assume the method was something mundane. Even this death wasn't caused by some kind of supernatural force. It just happened, unobserved. We had people who could do it and the, uh, and the methods that fit. That was the best way to look at it. Right? Maybe you're right. You agree? I do think that it was done by people I know, by actual humans. But that... Uh, but that... 
didn't that go against her whole god story? I wanted to ask that, but seeing her eyes made me fall silent. Her eyes were wide and cloudy. But... Her lips let out clear words. No one. I looked away. I probably wanted to cover my ears too. No one can escape God. I found her words so irrational, it began to frighten me. I asked Shiemi to call uh, Kiyonokishi, uh, Kiyonokishi to help carry the corpse, but she insisted, insisted on doing it herself. I caved and began uh, the unpleasant task. Following Takami-san's example, I removed the door and placed his body on it. Shiemi and I each took, uh, on the end, uh, took an end of the door and lifted it up. Okay, move the door. Okay, cool, that's good. Good idea. Good job, guys. He was as heavy as he looked, and I wouldn't have been surprised if this was too much even for two men. However, Shiemi lifted her side without letting out a single grunt of exertion. It felt like uh, active rejection of the idea that she might need help. We slowly began walking. Kiyonosuke, she was outside. He was anxious about something. It didn't look like he was waiting for us, so maybe Rikako Umatsu hadn't come out yet. I couldn't afford to stop and chat. Relaxing my arms or, lower, uh, or lowering my body could lead to me dropping Takumi-san. I kept walking forward without a single word. Sighing and stopping was our sign that one of us needed to rest. Every time one of us did it, we lowered him to the ground, rubbing our aching hands, adjusting our grips and resuming walking. As we approached the cliff, Shiemi's expression grew darker. Takumi-chan was the youngest of the adults. He was like an older brother to me. I wasn't going to ask how that mattered. I didn't see a point in questioning it. Mm-hmm. I simply nodded, continuing to play the role of audience. He played with me a lot and always protected me when the other, uh, when the other adults got mad at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing uh, good about this humid place, but he loved Yasumisu and the people living here. Yeah, I, I could tell. He was honest to a fault. Yeah. It's nice that Har Hararaki's being a uh, an active listener in this conversation. I don't want to just throw him away. Of course you don't. I don't like this either. Should we stop? The only ones who'd really care about this are Takumi-san himself and uh, Tyson, right? No. we got to do this. Uh, and it looks like we're going to do this next time on Borderline Games. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Raging Loop. Um, and we'll see more about who's going to be murdered, who are the wolves, and all that kind of stuff next time on Borderline Games. Have a good evening. Boy, boy.